Hello, everyone, and welcome to the impromptu live stream. I got to tell you, these are the days that, uh, of course, we should do this as historical magic actually happens. So just like the thumbnail and title suggests, we're going to go over what we know right now about the Bitcoin ETF, and uh, hopefully it actually goes through. So just as a recap, first of all, thanks for coming, everybody. I appreciate it. I think that we're going to see a little bit more information as time progresses. Right now, it is 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We don't expect the actual ETF to go live or to get approved until roughly 4 or 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's like three, two, three, four hours from now. So this is what we know. And to give everybody a recap, now, yesterday was a pretty fun day. We had a nice uh, hack from... If somebody unknown, it, it could be somebody in the SEC, and they actually hacked the uh, Twitter or X account of the SEC, and they put out this nice little message which said, hey, today's uh, approval enhances market transparency, provides investors with efficient access to digital asset investments with a regulator framework. And it was a tweet from the SEC, and I think we should have known that it was a fake when we see this, uh, the emoticon for Bitcoin. I don't know if the SEC would actually do that. But that's what it is. And of course, that was uh, immediately, well, roughly about 10 minutes or so, it was actually deleted. And of course, we didn't see anything. But uh, lucky for us, this will live down, this will live forever in the analogies of traditional or, excuse me, finance history as it's found its way on the ordinals uh, for Bitcoin. And it's actually minted right, <laughs> it's minted right now as an ordinal. And uh, you can find this, there's a link in the description. So this will forever live on the blockchain for what happened. And it was actually said, it was Michael Saylor who said that the Bitcoin ETF will be the only ETF in history which has been approved twice by the SEC. So we'll see how it actually goes and uh, well, hopefully it actually works. Now, as a reminder, uh, Gary has been protecting you quite hard. And uh, so far he's done a, a, a fantabulous job with Kraken, the other stuff, eh, not so much. So, you know, there are some things that uh, could be uh, left to ponder about what they could actually do. And I thought this was actually pretty funny. Coinbase actually reached out to him and said, hey, if you need help with your security practices, because I don't know if you understand what 2FA is, we can help you. Coinbase executives publicly, publicly offered to help the SEC sort out security on its social media account after it was, uh, of course, compromised. I thought it was a pretty pretty good flex on Coinbase because they've had to deal with the SEC so much. And they're like, hey, we know you don't know what you're doing, so let us help you. I thought it was pretty good. So there's that piece on the SEC. And of course, we'll get to the ETF information in a bit. But just so you know, uh, this didn't go unnoticed by Congress as Senators Vance and Tillis are asking for explanation for the SEC's errant announcement of the approval of the ETFs. Essentially, they're requesting that Gary respond as chairman of the SEC about what actually happened here. And I think this is, you know, great that they do that. But remember, Gary's a master at this. Every single hearing that I see him at, he's always able to dodge the question. He's always able to say, oh, excuse me, what was that? And to kind of like let the time run out. So this is just, in my personal opinion, a nothing burger, but uh, it is interesting. So here's what we know so far about the ETF. This was actually revealed about an hour ago. This is the following detail. This is actually uh, ingrained in the SEC and the uh, sec.gov. There's a link in the description. You can check this out. This is not fake because we have to be aware because we can't trust the SEC, right? They've already been hacked. Hopefully their website hasn't been hacked, but who knows? And it says here, this was on January 10th, today, 2024, 1056 AM, one document. And people were saying, okay, this is ARC 21. This is Kathy Wood, and it says shares of Bitcoin ETF and all company filings. And everybody's like, okay, this is it. It's actually been approved. No, nah, not really. What this is is a CBOE uh, certification. If we actually click on the PDF itself, all this really says is, hey, the CBO is, is staying like, look, please be advised that the exchange has received an application dated December 20th, 2023 from the above referenced issuer and has approved the following securities for listing on CBOE, ARC21 shares Bitcoin ETF. So essentially what it's saying is like, look, yes, it's available. We've gotten it and we're going to approve it. And the powers that be can actually go in there and say, yes, it's actually, they've gone through the steps of this. So this is an approval per, per se. And a lot of people are on, on Twitter were like, this is it, they approved. From what I can tell, it's uh, not. So 
if you want to be a super sleuth and go through all this, if you actually go to, let me see if I can do this. Yeah, the SEC uh, da, 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 da. filings. Let's click on filings. Do, 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 do. Description. Daily indexes. Ah, this isn't it. Ah, bah, 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 bah. ah that's not it either. Ah, there it is. Company filing search. Like you can put everything in that you want. You can put in BlackRock and see what has been the most recent. You can put in ARC 21 and do it from there. But so far, everything that I've looked at so far hasn't had anything to date uh, as far as January 10th. And of course, you can go through that, sec.gov forward slash Edgar forward slash browse. Link in the description as well. But this is actually happening. This is uh, James found this over at Best Answers. And he states, hey, Fidelity ETF, ARC B is live, uh, but not trading yet. Interesting C options coming soon. That's... So it's live as far as the ARC21 shares Bitcoin ETF. It looks like you can buy or sell, or it's actually getting ready to it. And Marty Party says, not only that, ARC and HODL, which is the one of the signs, I think, for the, one of the other uh, participants, is listed on Fidelity. Limit orders are open. ETF is live. I don't think it's live per se, but you can't put limit orders in. I don't know what's actually going to uh, be approved. But uh, if it happens today, it looks like everybody's ready. The I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. Things are actually moving. Uh, also, from Bitcoin Archive, Bloomberg Terminals listed all 11 Bitcoin ETFs pending listing. So again, everybody's doing the thing that they're supposed to do, and they have it all set up. And then also, I mean, we have all these things in place. We just don't have it from Gary yet for the ETF. So that's uh, really where we're at right now. We're just kind of waiting and we're in a holding pattern. But again, like I've said before, like yesterday, people were really ticked off. They were mad because uh, there was a hack and they were concerned. It's inevitable. I mean, the ETF is going to come at some point. You know, like I said, even if it doesn't, the narrative is already there. We've already got major, major institutions coming in. So it's just a matter of time and I've got time. So these are the positive things that are happening. And also I found this, this piece interesting because as we move forward, we're going to, there's going to be some pushback. You're going to get the Elizabeth Warrens. You're going to get the Jamie Dimons. And you're going to get people who are going to say that, you know, Bitcoin's off when it's horrible and it's just uh, rat poison squared. Warren Buffett cannot get off that. I don't know if it's Warren Buffett or Charlie Munger who said that, but one of those guys did. And we're at a crossroads, quite honestly. People need education. People need information. And uh, I love to see stuff like this. And this is why I prefer to get my news from X or what was called Twitter, because of the community notes, because you can actually see the realism behind it. You're not going to find this on CNN. You're not going to find it on Fox News. You're not going to find it on CNBC or MSNBC. Community notes are great because it brings together a whole lot of people to say, that's not correct. This was from the New Scientist, and it says, Bitcoin currently consumes 0.7% of all electricity generated worldwide, and developers seem unwillingly to change how it works, but enforcing change is far from easy. And of course, that's a very negative article. And this is what I love about uh, the community notes. It says, hey, the claim that Bitcoin strains water and energy resources is based on faulty research by one employee of the Dutch Central Bank. Crazy, the central bank puts out something negative that has been debunked numerous times, and it gives them actual links to debunk the article. I love that stuff. So just be aware you're going to see stuff like this. And also be aware that as this ETF comes through, you're going to be people that are going to be they're going to want to try to either manipulate or move people away from it. It just seems like too good of an opportunity. And that's where we get Jamie Dimon. Now, I don't understand why this happens. I kind of do. I have my theories sound off in the comment section, but he was actually on Fox Business. And again, JP Morgan, which he is the CEO of JP Morgan, is an authorized participant for BlackRock Spot Bitcoin ETF. And Again, he said in Congress about a month ago, correct me in the comment section, the same thing he's going to say today, which is essentially like Bitcoin is awful. It's terrible. It's only used for cartels, drug dealers. 
and just the worst people of all time. And uh, it has no use case. But it's amazing that he's the CEO and like he has no power over his own company. It makes no sense. So here he was. Just I'm going to have you take a listen and then you be the judge. Let me stop this real quick. I want you to actually hear this. Take a listen. Coming on Bitcoin, and you, you know, famously said recently that you would shut it down if you were in government. Can you give us more clarity on that? Yeah, what I was also pointing out is that the, the, the actual use cases are sex trafficking, tax avoidance, you know, anti-money laundering, uh, terrorism financing. It's not people just buying and selling Bitcoin. That, that's, there's no value to, you know, if you, you're buying and selling Bitcoin. A lot there from Jamie Dimon and Adam. <laughs> a lot there from a guy whose company is an authorized participant for the Bitcoin spot ETF and seems to trash it at every opportunity that it gets. It doesn't make much sense if you were that passionate about it. And of course, I don't know how this, how powerful he is as a CEO or what he can do, but usually the CEO has somewhat of a say. And uh, if I was a board member and I'm like, look, pal, this is where we're going. You're out of here because you're kind of giving us a negative vibe of, uh, of one of our investments. Or maybe it's just, the magician hand trick. Who knows? Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then also to lighten up the day at the very end as we come through here, let's talk about Charlie Lee. <laughs> or excuse me, Charlie Lee. Uh, Charlie Lee is the, is the founder of Litecoin, Tom Lee, excuse me. And he gives us some Bitcoin predictions. Now on this channel, I do not give predictions. I think they're quite worthless. They're nice to think about because of what it could be. I think Bitcoin could definitely hit a million, but I don't know if it's going to be in 2025 or 2035. That's just kind of how it goes from. So I want you to take a listen to this and uh, allow yourself to dream about where things could go. But as a, as a little piece here, uh, Tom has never, he has never met a bull run he didn't like. That's for sure. So Take a listen to this one. It is pretty good. I like to hear these things. So take a listen. That's yeah. What you're, that's what, yeah, that's what you're saying. It was transitory all along. It was, yes. it wasn't, it was, it is, wasn't it. So now we decided we're back to that. Okay, so yeah. just to, to end on, give me your, um, your one year and five year price target for Bitcoin. Uh, I think in the next 12 months, uh, something over a hundred thousand, you know, maybe a hundred fifty thousand, and you know, in the next five years, again, it's, you know, it's a there's a finite supply, and now we have a, a potentially huge increase in demand with a spot Bitcoin approval. So I think in five years, you, you know, something around half a million would be potentially achievable. It's all just so mind-boggling, um, Tom. And anybody that that just says you're just insane hasn't been following your work you might be but uh you've got enough credibility with with all your good calls to to where at least i would right. think some skeptics would say it would, would start thinking yeah. about it. Tom, does it make you think about it andrew sure my question to tom is do you think that this is going to upend the idea that people will buy bitcoin directly meaning people who historically would have wanted to buy bitcoin do they continue to buy bitcoin through a coinbase or through some kind of other platform and exchange, or do you think it, it basically becomes uh, not a speculation, but it just an, inv an investment through ETFs, and that's how this all works? I, I think there's probably a generational divide at work. Uh, you know, I think that, you know, a lot of the younger generation of investors want to be uh, my keys, my coin, so they want to own uh, the private keys. But as you know, there's a, a generation of folks that would rather allocate through their 401k or through public markets or liquid assets. And well, you know, I mean, if you look at some, you know, the percentage of assets held by those over age 50, it's close to 76% of all wealth in America. You know, it's over $120 trillion. So I think that cohort is still going to prefer to own it through public markets and public proxies. Yeah. All right, Tom. Uh, I mean, I'm going to pay BlackRock's fee. Just, just, they'll plant some trees or something. For he, that's the wrong way to do things. But and that's the thing. You know, people are going to, the CTF is going to come through and they'll be like, great. And a lot of people are going to do it. I don't think they really should. I think they should learn all about self-custody, but uh, that's is what it is. But as a reminder, someone reminded this uh, 
told me about this was in the traditional markets, if if trading goes so much percentage high and so much percentage low, they start to pause trading on that day. So pumps of 10%, you can't do anything with that. Uh, and of course, if there's a massive dips, you can't do anything with that either, unless you go to these different centralized exchanges. But if you're stuck on these like, well, I got to have my my traditional finance and uh, and BlackRock and Valley do all, all those things for me, you're going to miss out on a lot. And then also, it's another thing is that you don't really own it. You own, you you leave it to somebody else. And again, there's ways, there's a there's ways that things should be, and there's the ways that things are gonna be. And that's just how it's gonna be. People are going to give up their rights to self-custody and leave it in the hands of uh, bigger people. So that's pretty much it. And then lastly, I just found this. Oops, that's not it. That I'll talk about in a second. Charles Gasparino, this was uh, 15 minutes ago. Uh, to, now it's 3.16, this is a 259. Um, 3.16 is uh, AST time. He says, Scoop, one senior exec at a major Bitcoin spot ETF applicant tells Fox Business that the SEC Gov had informed his firm that the fund will be approved today sometime after the close of trading. So any reports that it's been approved is erroneous so far. However, he added this, this caveat, this is Gensler, so who the F knows when this actually happens, this is a story that's developing. So we'll see how it is. And that's that's about it. Uh, lastly, there was a story I missed yesterday. I know no one really cares about this, but it's kind of big when we start to get into alts. Polygon. Polygon just signed a deal with Fox, the multi-billion dollar industry. That Fox, telecommunications, entertainment, and things like that uh, for AI tool. And it talks about what the rise of, rise of AI tools and AI generated media, which you probably saw are going to see a video of maybe Michael Saylor or somebody else. AI generated, tell you, send me a Bitcoin. I'll sell you a three or something stupid like that. But he said, uh, we're distinguishing truth from lies is difficult. Proving provenance and authenticity of any given piece of content is now more important than ever. That's why verify by Fox Corporation built on Polygon comes in handy. And they're going to essentially be a digital ID to prove that you're actually a human instead of a generated AI version. And I gotta tell you, we are in desperate need of that, especially with all the different scams that are out there. So that's it for today. So look, we'll see when it comes out and uh, hopefully we get the approval from Gary at some point. And then uh, I'll be, uh, tomorrow we have NFA Live with me, Guy from Coin Bureau and Ben from In The Cryptoverse. And we'll talk about <laughs> If it gets approved and just what the price action does, nobody knows. Some people say buy the rumor, sell the news. I think that's kind of goofy because if you're a trader, sure, but it's not the whole thing of what we wanted. We've been talking about mass adoption forever and you want to sell right now. You can, but I think uh, there's more fireworks in store for us, but I could be wrong. That's it. So look, like today's video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Everything we talk about is very time sensitive, but uh, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate you.